Hey, I'm Rora. I'm Jane. And we are Birds of Clay. And we're here to talk all things Australian pottery and ceramic art. So put your kettle on and let's have a chat. We would like to pay our respects to the traditional custodians on the lands on which this podcast is recorded. We acknowledge the rich history of art, craft and storytelling that has been occurring for millennia and acknowledge elders past, present and country as provider, protector and guide. Working with clay is intrinsically linked to country and we would not be here without the care and connection that our First Nations peoples have shown for thousands of years on this continent we call Australia. It's going. It's we're going. live. <laughs> we're live, and we're back from a little tea break. Um, and yes, we are hydrated, and we have realised that we've missed some essential introductory parts of the conversation. Um, we didn't tell you where we are, <laughs> <laughs> so we we're both located in the Lockyer Valley, actually on opposite. Corners. And, yeah, both yeah. on the outskirts. I'm almost Ipswich and you're almost Toowoomba. Toowoomba. Yeah. yeah. So that's where we are. Yeah, and uh, we both, well, I'm currently studying and Laura studied. Studied. At the University of Southern Queensland. Yes. In Queensland. Queens, Queensland. In Queensland. We <laughs> are in Australia. <laughs> we are. Probably got that from our accent. Yes. But yes, um, that's where we're at. And I think it's really important to share that because uh, we are regional. Mm-hmm. Which means we miss out on a lot of good things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Country gals making in the country. Yeah, and it's also important because we make with earth. Yeah, and actually, something I want to start doing is digging clay. Ah, oh, yes, yeah. That's yeah. actually um, I have spoken to our traditional custodians about. That. Yeah, and yeah, because it's interesting where we are, like especially out west a little bit, um, yeah. Maringandan, um Gumbungi, that area, there's a lot of ochre pits Ooh. that were very sacred places. Yeah. So you probably can't dig the t- clay from there, but uh-huh. um, I think it brings up a really interesting conversation around um, permissions mm-hmm. and clay. Because, I mean, it's not like we're not using clay. We're yeah. using clay from Victoria, mm-hmm. from Ipswich, yep. from places all around Australia, and that is still... First Nation country. Mm-hmm. So is it different if you dig your own? It's something we spoke about a lot in yeah. the triennial. Yeah, that's uh, a good last... question. Yeah, so um, yeah. Hmm. But digging clay's great. I've got some from a ball that was dug at work. Ooh. Um, sitting there. But yeah, I have spoken to um, the traditional custodians, the Jarawa traditional custodians about using it and maybe even making them some mugs. Oh, that's yeah. great. With, um, I've done some work with some bunya pines, like Ooh. painted bunya pines. Yeah. Because that's our um, culturally most important tree in our area. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we were on the path up to the Bunya Mountains for the big gathering that happened every three to four years. Mm. So, yeah, important stuff. Um, but, yeah, clay, raw clay. Mm. Yeah, it's really a lot to think about. I've never processed raw clay before. No. Um, I did watch this video recently on how to do it so maybe i'll get to it in a few months time <laughs> yeah it's just like i mean basically it's just like reclaim yeah okay yeah yeah i mean it's like reclaim for me because i've always got bits of chamois and rocks oh, and leaves stuff. yeah yeah i am forever pulling out leaves from the sides of my my pots on the wheel using reclaim yeah like, oh what's that why is my pot so lumpy <laughs> oh it's a gum leaf or actually I pulled out an entire gum nut the other day. <laughs> That's great. That's so Aussie. <laughs> I know it is, isn't it? Um, I've actually gone to using an old kitchen sieve for my reclaim. Oh, okay. Because I was over that. Yeah. 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 I mean, good move. <laughs> yeah. It just, it made it easier to wedge up. It does too. add an extra step though. It does. I would have done a lot less reclaim now I do that actually. Yeah. <laughs> the buckets are gathering. Uh-huh. Yeah. I have this rule that I won't start another bucket because I have a quite a big flexi tub next to my wheel and once that's full I will do my reclaim and right now it's 
towering and overflowing. <laughs> it's like the recycling. I keep thinking, I can fit a bit more in there. I can put it off for a bit longer, sure. I'm just like, st- I've started new ones. I'm, I was the same, no more new tubs. Yeah. And now I'm like, nah, it's Christmas. I'll do it in January. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sometimes I look at my um, reclaim bucket and I think, damn, I've really just let myself go. <laughs> <laughs> It's like how together you are is reflected in the reclaim bucket. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, I um I don't remember who it was, but I was following this Instagram Instagrammer who was also a potter and she said she had never ever reclaimed her clay. And she had something like, you know, an insane amount of followers, always selling work. So I'm thinking, you're clearly making a lot of work. How much clay? And she admitted to throwing it out. What? And it was porcelain. Oh my goodness. So I was just thinking, how much porcelain are you sending to landfill when you could just easily... It It is like, you know, people talk about the environmental impact of ceramics a lot. And I'm like, it's just a no brainer. Like, reclaim your clay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's different if you're living in a tiny apartment. Yeah. You're yeah. hand building. Look, I don't try not to judge folks too hard, but come on, reclaim. Yeah. <laughs> also, it's so cost effective. Oh, yeah, <laughs> totally. It. Totally. Especially, like, imagine throwing out that black clay. Oh, oh my gosh. So, and porcelain. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and porcelain. So, currently, um, where Jane and I are, where we buy clay, we get this Keynes Midfire Black, if you're familiar, you know, rest in peace, sorry for your loss. It's great, <laughs> it's beautiful, but it is so hard to work with, and it's also, what, $55 a yeah, bag? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Depends where you get it from, but yeah. Yeah, around the $50 mark. It's, just... it's a beautiful clay, finicky to work with. Yeah, loves to crack. <laughs> loves to crack, <laughs> Loves yeah. a good crack. Hard to throw thin. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you make it look easy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Your pots are so light and even and delicate. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I do drink a lot of tea. Yeah. It does. You make know me... what you like yeah. and you make what you like. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think we both do though. I love some of those big mugs that are coming out. I love that you did the mills. How yeah. Many mills I fit? was shocked. <laughs> so I made this mug and I've I've been throwing with hmm. I wouldn't, I'm going to say 550 gram balls oh, of clay. This is interesting, yes. Yes. So I've been measuring it out, filling up a garbage bag with all the clay balls. So yeah. then you can just wrap the garbage bag up. I used to just put them on a wear board, all my weighed up clay balls, and put a damp cloth over them. Oh no, in a bag. Bucket and garbage bag is the way to yeah. go. I was doing it the hard way for a long time. Anyways, yeah, 550 grams for my mugs. And I was measuring all of my mugs for my shop update. So I wanted to know and provide the volume of each mug. And such variance, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had a couple that were 500 mil, a couple 450, a couple 400. Yeah, just that yeah. whole 100 mil variance in some of them. I know, and you realise, like, I've noticed just that little belling out at the bottom. Yeah. It can give you so much more. It really can yeah yeah well i found because i throw kind of between 350 and 450 yeah that's my like so i do 350 400 and 450 for mugs yeah and they vary a lot because i have an inability to make the same thing over and over yeah (laughs) i could if i tried but i'm just not trying (laughs) (laughs) but i've noticed that the grams usually work out to be the same as the mills so like if you're throwing 350 grams of clay. Usually it's 350 mil. <gasps> Wouldn't that be magic? That would be magic. But you Which know, also means I'm trimming off a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually, also something else interesting about the mugs is I measured them and they were pretty much across the board 10 centimeters high wow. and 13 centimeters at the widest point wow. with the handle. Yeah, they're yeah, all the you're same really measurements. Good at consistency. Oh, thanks. It's one of your but strengths. The vo- but the volume <laughs> no, is all different. <laughs> Probably cuz the shapes are all a bit different. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So, what have you been doing this week, Rora? This week. Uh, this week wildly, I haven't even 
gotten my hands. It's Thursday, by the way. I ha- Is it? No, it's Friday. It's Friday. <laughs> oh, gosh. No, it's one of those weeks. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I haven't even, and I'm horrified to say this, gotten my hands in any clay this what? week. I know. I know. I have spent the entire week taking product photos, uploading them, measuring them, editing them, um, editing the website, just on my computer, basically. Yeah. And, oh, you know, it's stuff that I love. I love photography and all that stuff. But, yeah, I'm really, really missing Clay <laughs> this week. But it's also great to see um, everything I've made in really nice pictures. Yes. Your pictures are beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I yeah. feel like it really just does so much for the work because I'm so used to just seeing them, you know, stacked up on a market table. Yeah. Or, you know, in a box somewhere. With the mess behind them. To yes. actually <laughs> stage them and get them in good lighting and photograph them, it just changes them. It makes me actually see their value. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Which is yeah, wild. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I need to do better on that front, but yeah. Oh, you know, it's something I never really do no. until I had to do it this week. Um, also, I applied for a couple of solo shows yay. last night. So, yay. yay. One in Toowoomba, one in Brisbane. So, we'll wait to hear back about that. Uh, hmm. And now I'm here with you. Yay. And that's my week. That's good. Yeah, it is good. And there's markets tomorrow. Yeah. Which will likely be raining. I know. Yeah. Oh, well. Very soggy, just like last week. I know, it's just so beautiful today. You're like, why? Why can't it be like why? this tomorrow? But yeah. Hmm. Anyway. That's the farmer's market for you, out yeah. outside uh-huh. in the weather. Hmm. I know, we were talking the other day, me and my partner, <clears throat> and we're like, you guys do it every week. Yeah. It's a lot. It is a lot. And that's why we don't commit to Sunday markets <laughs> anymore. Because yeah. we did, and it was too much. It's just... Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, another thing I did this week, this morning, was unload a glaze. Yeah. Which you did yesterday. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, mm. yesterday. Yours sounded a little bit more successful than mine. Um, yeah, which is great because I haven't had as many successful ones lately, but I finally have unloaded some large bowls. Yay! And up until this point, I've probably broken or... You know, they've cracked, I'm going to say, five really large ones Aww. up until now. But I've finally done it. I've cracked the code. And you know what the secret is? What? Slower ramp rate. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and trim more off the bumps. Oh, yeah. More trim. even. More yeah. even. Yeah. And you're firing with gas. Yes. Which is a lot less predictable, uh-huh. I think, than electric. I'm, I'm electric, yeah. so yeah. I have never fired with gas. Yeah. Uh, obviously read a lot about it. I feel like it's been two years now. Um, and for context, my gas kiln is a single burner and the burner is not centered in the kiln. So it's off to one side. I, I just feel like, you know, I was shown how to fire it, basically how to operate it. And then since then on, I've been just figuring it out myself. So getting even temperature and knowing when and how much to increase the gas pressure has been a real, I guess, arduous journey. And I've had to learn through, you know, trial and error. So I've yeah. lost a lot of work. But um, but you've learned so much. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I feel like just now I'm getting it even. It's awesome. Two years. Like, yeah. But <laughs> damn. It's been a busy two years. <laughs> yeah, it has been. It has yeah. been. Well, so, me, I just set the electric controller and go, bye. Oh, it sounds yeah. so good. It's not. I feel like like the first kiln I had, which was the China painting kiln, yeah, that we rewired to make it go to cone six just. <laughs> Ooh. Um, that was a journey. Yeah. Because even though we put a controller on it, I it wouldn't quite make temperature. So yeah. time out, the controller would time out. It actually would have been easier if I'd stuck to the manual way because controllers if it takes too long to hit top temperature they shut the kiln down ah because otherwise it just gets held at that top temperature for days oh that would be bad melts your kiln Mm. from the inside out yeah so i understand why they've got it but when you're really pushing kilns to their limits (laughs) which is i seem to be doing (laughs) um 
Yeah. Yeah. Bit of an issue, but... Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm. Through working with very strange, bad equipment, you do learn a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you also do what you can with what you've got, so... Yeah. You know? Yeah. Make we were talking work. about this the other day, how being poor is quite good at being resourceful. Oh, it's so it true. It teaches you so much. So true. <laughs> yeah. You just have to fu- you make creative solutions to things. Yeah, yeah. And if you're never forced to think like that, I f- I find those people quite dull. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I, I feel like we need to like say, yeah, poor in the Western world with lots of privilege, but yes. still, yeah, can't go out and buy a shiny new kiln. Yeah, no, yeah. not yet. Not yet. Not yet. No, far um, from it. One day. One day, yeah. And we'll tell you all about it when it happens. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, tell me about your week, Jane. Oh, my week. I feel like the last week and the week before it, so, has been a bit of a drama. I'm usually, like, I've been kicking along okay, but mm. I slipped down the stairs mm. last week. <laughs> I just, like, pushed my body over the edge and I've been in a bit of pain. I was stupid. I was, like, holding a cup of tea in a pot plant. I had my boots on covered in clay, (laughs) undone, on the wet steps. So, you know. stairs? Just the front ones. Okay, yeah. 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 Bang. (laughs) Damn. And I lost my cup of tea. Oh. More importantly, the tea. I didn't didn't break the cup, but, yeah. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, that just set me off for this week of of not a good week. And Mm. then my wheel decided to stop working. And that yeah. was a journey. Yeah. Yes. Luckily, Rora came to the rescue and let me Nancy. What happened with the wheel? Um, I started to throw planters, you know, planters with the inbuilt little tray. Oh, yeah. Because I was like, oh, they're so cute. I want to do them. Yeah. And they'll be good Christmas, you know. They'll yeah. be fun. And, you know, so I'm throwing two kilos of clay, which is a little bit more than my mugs, obviously. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and as I was centering, the wheel just would get slower mm. and stop working. So I've got a big old Vanco number three uh, cone drive wheel. What colour is the... It's like cream and army green kind oh, of. Oh, yeah. 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 So 1978. Nice. It came about. Hasn't... We put new grommets in it. I say we because my partner's always helping with things like that because <laughs> I have a meltdown and get tears. And I'm pretty practical, but I just need someone to bounce off. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, he's quite good at coming in and helping out Mm. um he's also just had that socialized male being shown how to do things and has been and can do things confidently yeah and just is confident in his own skills while i just doubt everything i do because i'm like i don't know Uh so anyway he's often helpful which i'm really grateful for but Mm -hmm. i also am fiercely independent yeah so struggle with that Mm -hmm. (laughs) but yeah anyway off the track so yeah fix the grommets (laughs) Like a year ago, put new grommets in. Um, and then this time I flipped it over and I noticed the springs had been were quite loose and rusty. So mm-hmm. I was like, new springs. So drive to two hour drive to Brisbane to get <sighs> new springs, came home, yeah. put the springs in, same problem still existing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, there's a fantastic online network of potters in this in this country Mm -hmm. and there's a guy called peter steggle who has done an amazing and i say to every person out there who has a vanco wheel Mm. check out this website we'll put it in the show notes but it's something like vanco it's just at a wordpress Mm. and he's just got so much info up there cool and he actually services wheels for a living so amazing guy peter steggle wow anyway i reached out to him and he said i think it's the drive wheel yeah so needed to buy a new drive wheel, which is like the rubbery circle thing that the cone the steering wheel looking thing. <laughs> yeah, steering yeah. wheel thing. Yeah, <laughs> and because I've got an old wheel, I was struggling to find one mm. that has a one inch shaft mm. because the new ones have a twenty five mil shaft. Mm. And there's some pottery supply people out there in the world that were telling me that they're the same. Mm. They are not. So anyway, I got one from Walker's and it arrived yesterday. <gasps> Yay! So it's half in, but I'm waiting for some help just to get it in. And um, it was quite, takes a fair bit to get it back on. It's yeah, pretty okay. tight. Yeah. But hopefully that'll fix it. Otherwise, the third problem could be just adjusting a screw that puts the cone closer in. <clears throat> okay. But that's a last resort. Yep. 
So, yeah, that was a big technical trap. Yeah. But um, awesome in the long run. Honestly, to... learning these things is amazing. It is. And, yeah. like, only when things wrong go wrong do you really learn it. And, you know, I know some people out there would just go, oh, buy a new wheel, but I mm. don't have that yeah. ability. So it's been a bit annoying paying for parts at this time of the year when I'm hoping to make an income to get me through the Christmas, New Year's where there's no work. But, mm. um... Yeah, it's okay. Learning yeah. lots, trying to stay positive, but yeah. also melting down quite a bit. Mm. And it's been raining here, which has been wonderful because we've been in drought, but also has been very strange with drying pots. Yeah. Have you found that? Um, I mean, this week I'm grateful for it because I have a sculpture in the cupboard. Oh, yeah. That I keep telling myself I will return to <laughs> <laughs> when I finish all my you know, online stuff this week, which I finished now. Yay. Until we apply for this other thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm, I've just got it in the cupboard with a bag over it, garbage bag, and it's staying damp. So I'm really grateful for that. But yeah, in the humidity, everything dries so slow. Yeah. But then you'll get a hot day and things will just go fast. Yeah. And I think that's what's happened. So this week, oh, cause I've had stupid back pain. I've just been like really dragging myself around and I've made a few planters and a few mugs, yeah. but then they dried too quick. So I don't know what I'm doing. And I finally fired stuff I made like two weeks ago that's been drying slow. And unfortunately a lot of things cracked, mm, which I'm not really weeks. sure. Yeah. And look, there are these oil bottles that I'm really happy with, but because I didn't have a chuck yeah. for them, I didn't trim them. Uh -huh. I just kind of rolled their bottoms. Yeah. Yep. Um, which looked fine, but I realised I'd left a fair bit of meat mm. in the in the bottom. So that's where some of the cracks have come from, for yep. sure. And I just think some of the drying has been a bit weird. Like, it's dried... It's been very windy here. Mm. And so things have dried Uneven. on one side yeah. and not the other. And yep. Yeah. Just... And also, like, I'm working... I didn't really say about how I was working. So I work at home. I also have access to the uni studio. Mm. But... I'm pretty well set up at home. Yeah. Well, badly set up at home. <laughs> I kind of work in a tiny small laundry under the house that has lots of mosquitoes at the moment. Oh, so many. So many. So many mosquitoes. <laughs> they are um, insatiable. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So I've got the like sandalwood mozzie coil stick things going. Um, I've moved away from mozzie coils because I supposedly they're very toxic. I have heard that. Yeah. I still use them. Do you? I just got these new ones. They're like sandalwood citronella sticks. Oh. They smell quite strong, but they seem to work really well. Yeah. So anyway, that's the laundry. And every time it rains, the water flows through on the ground there. So at least, you know. Clean floor. Clean floor. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't do um, the work for you. <laughs> yeah. And then the kiln's in the other shed full of all our junk. And then I've got Nancy in the big shed, mm. which... Just on the quiet is also a bedroom. I know, not very smart. <laughs> it's very far away from the bed. But yeah, look, something needs to change. <laughs> We're at that stage. Yeah. I have, cannot tell you the amount of things I have broken through just working in a tiny space and hitting things with my elbows yeah. or tripping over uh -huh. something. So yeah. this summer, between Christmas and New Year's, I'm not going to go have fun at the folk festival or do anything like that, I'm going to stay here and set up a proper studio. Oh, let me know if you want help. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Is half of that going to be convincing your partner yes. to declutter? <laughs> maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've been looking at shipping containers and going, maybe I'll just put all his stuff. Uh-huh. His electronic yeah. stuff in there. Or you can tell him, okay, this little pottery shed, laundry shed, you can put stuff in. This yeah. shed, this big one, is going to be the pottery studio. I know. And we need to, like, also, just work out our spaces. I know. I know. There's so much unused and badly used space in this house. You know, it's it's one of those things that you're at the bottom of the mountain <laughs> of work. True. It's like, who's the guy, Syphilis, who pushes the rock up and then it rolls back down? Oh, one of those guys. Yeah, <laughs> I'm totally that guy at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this week's been interesting. Um, oh, I put in an application for a group exhibition. Yeah, you did. So yeah, that'll be really interesting. There's 11 of us, so quite a few. We're 
all at different stages of our ceramics career. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we just thought we might as well put in for one locally. Yeah. It's been a bit funny because it's at the gallery I work for, so I had to check that with conflict Are you of on the um, <laughs> selection no, panel? No. <laughs> no, it's all gone through the right procedures through that. But yeah, um, that would be really nice. That would be like a bit of a first exhibition for me. Yeah. Um, I've never really exhibited. And I will say, you did a really incredible job bringing together a bunch of um, uh, artists. fickle artists. <laughs> Um, and yeah, getting us to all submit CVs and documents and everything, even though you had to chase some people up, but yeah. Oh, no, it was pretty good. Everyone really? was really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big undertaking though. Yeah. And it was, it's good though. It's good experience. I don't know how the least experienced person out of the group ended I was, up doing it. But... I know. Least experienced, most motivated. Oh, I don't think most motivated. Oh. But anyway, maybe most institutionalized. Oh. I don't know. I think you're pretty motivated. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's it. I'm motivated to do an exhibition with these people who mm-hmm. are like, oh, exhibitions, I've done them. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. always thinking, oh, I need to pad that CV out. And, yeah. You know. Artist residencies, just saying. Yes. More exhibitions. Actually, I am saving a little bit, and I'm are thinking um, maybe I could use that instead of installing another kiln maybe i could use it and do a residency somewhere yeah you know i yeah, don't know totally. we'll see we'll see what happens yeah thinking about things where would you like to go what would be a dream residency oh there's so many i'd really like to go to archie bray oh, that's right just yeah. because i admire a lot of the artists that go through and do residencies mm. there and i just think that place would have an amazing energy and i don't know everyone there just seems to be really pushing the boundaries of the material and I just think they're great yeah yeah I don't know much about them except for like Ben Carter and the podcast network and Mm. yeah they seem really cool yeah yeah so mm, I don't know maybe Canada there's actually one in New Zealand that I think looks really cool too yeah and yeah so many isn't there there are so many Maybe one day we'll be able to facilitate a residency. Oh, that'd be cool, yeah. That'd be very cool. A friend's thinking of buying a property and I'm like, may as well like buy a big one with some space so to just set it up. They're a ceramicist. On and the drive here, I was yeah. looking at everywhere thinking, imagine having one of these properties and hosting a pottery retreat. Yeah, it'd be such a good idea. Oh, such a good idea. I know. Yeah. Maybe got, one day. We've got all the good we ideas. We have so many ideas. <laughs> <I> <laughs> This podcast being one of them. (laughs) I'm like flat out making six mugs. (laughs) (laughs) Oh dear. Where Um, would you like to go? Well, I'd love to go to Japan, but I'd also, there's a few places. I've got family in the UK. Is it still gone? I think so. (laughs) It's flashing low battery now. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Folks in the friends in the UK mm-hmm. so yeah I'd love to go like St Ives like Ooh. Bernard Leach is kind of cool I don't know why like I'm not even really You're particularly into that but it's a beautiful part of the world I have been there mm-hmm. and I could go stay with my family yeah Can and Japan you? and also Penland mm-hmm. in the States yeah that looks really interesting I'd love to try glass blowing oh. yeah Something is calling me at the moment, even Ooh. though, like, I know that's not ceramics, but it kind of is. They do couples workshops at Mount Tambourine for couples. glass blowing. <laughs> yeah, you can Could do... Could you and I you be can... a couple and yes. go and do it? Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I don't think... Well, maybe Corey would want to come. But yeah, you can do... You can increase the amount of people and it discounts it, so... Oh, wow. I'll send you the link. I think, yeah. Um, Judy's got some nice little sculptures from there. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, let's do Sorry. It. That's a bit off yeah. topic. Yeah, a little bit of a side, yeah, side yeah. note. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, that's my week plus so many other things. <laughs> yeah, so many other things. Yeah. Mm. And we should sign off because our recording device is flashing low battery. Yeah, we're so, still working all this out. Yeah, we yeah. are working it out. I'm not so tech savvy. Um, I'm just going to we'll... be silent on that one. <laughs> I'm a bit the same. Oh, but, you know, our partner's no tech. They yeah, can I show know. us. I don't want to be those people, though. No, I know, but yeah. they can just show us some things and they yep. go away. Music dudes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But thank you for listening and tuning in to our first ever episode. Yeah. There will be many more. There will be. Because and, um, we gas bag a lot. <laughs> yeah, and give us feedback. What you liked, what you didn't, what uh-huh. you want to hear. Yeah. Um, it would be really cool to also receive some questions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That we could potentially answer or give it our best red hot go. <laughs> yeah. Have a Google around. Yeah. <laughs> Ask someone else. <laughs> Call a friend. Yeah. Mm. Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye. See ya. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. We hope you enjoyed. You can find us on Instagram at birdsofclay underscore podcast. Please feel free to send us any questions or comments. And if you could leave us a review on whatever platform you're listening on, that would be amazing. We'll see you next time.